and welcome to another episode of Make Thrift Buy, the show where you send in clothing that you've seen on the internet and then I try my best to recreate it. Natalia recently sent in this picture of a Brandy Melville top that's got this really interesting hemline around the neck, arms, and the bottom of the top. I did a little bit of research and I found out that it's called a lettuce hem and that you can do it yourself if you know the right sewing techniques. Natalia also said they destroyed three shirts trying to do this, so I'm hoping this video will, well, number one, work so that I don't add to this mass t-shirt destruction going on here, but I also hope it helps you guys do this lettuce hem right the first time you try it. So let's begin. So there's two ways you can do this hem, either using a serger or using a sewing machine. I'm gonna start with the serger technique first, but I'll also show you how to achieve it using a standard sewing machine as well. Okay, so I grabbed myself a plain t-shirt. This is one that I thrifted for a couple of dollars. First I put it on and I decided the length that I wanted to crop it to, added half an inch to this and then I drew on a faint line with chalk at this length. Then I laid it out onto my cutting mat, made that faint chalk line a lot more visible, and then I cut through both the front and the back layers of the t-shirt with my rotary cutter like this. Okay, so normally I would just discard this part into my scrap fabric bin, but instead I cut the bottom of the shirt up into smaller pieces like this, and it's gonna come in really useful here for practicing and perfecting my lettuce hem before I try that on the t-shirt. The first method that I'm going to show you for making a lettuce hem will use my serger. Now first I have to set up my serger to the settings to make a narrow hem. I only need three threads, not four, so I removed the thread that goes through the left needle and I also removed the left needle itself. So I only have my right needle threaded and all my threads are polyester. I also had to adjust the machine tensions. My lower looper is set to zero and the others to four, but your machine might differ, so check your manual. I set my differential feed all the way up to two, my stitch length to two and a half, my over edge cutting foot to just above four, and I also removed this thing. It's called a stitch finger, and it came out of somewhere in my machine. Wait, where did I take this out of? I removed it from one of these bits. Yeah, it's gonna be fun when I have to put it back in. Literally can't remember where it came from. Anyway, first I practiced my lettuce hem on the scrap pieces that I cut off the bottom of the shirt, making sure that I was surging along the stretch. While I was surging, I pulled the fabric with my right hand here. And I'll just show you what this looks like a little bit more close up. See how I'm pulling the fabric before it goes underneath the presser foot? This will create lots of ruffles in the hem. And when I was done, it looked like this, giving me a pretty lettuce hem. Yay! The second method is for those of you who don't own a serger or who don't want to spend hours setting up their sergers. Using a regular sewing machine, I'm going to use this standard zigzag stitch, and I'm going to set the stitch length to its shortest setting. On my machine, that's 0.3 and the stitch width to four. First, and just pretend this edge of the scrap fabric is actually the bottom raw edge of a t-shirt. I'm going to fold the t-shirt's hem up half an inch and then iron it in place, giving me this. Then I'm going to place it under my sewing machine's foot. You'll need to do a little bit of adjusting to get the stitch in the right place, but basically you want the right zigzag to just fall off the edge of the material. And then as I sewed with a zigzag stitch, I pulled the fabric gently from both the back and the front. and this creates that lettuce hem. I'm using a contrasting thread this time so that you can see what it looks like on the fabric, but obviously you can use thread that's either the same color as your fabric or different if you want a contrasting hem. And it totally depends on the type of look that you want, although I think that if you want a contrasting color, it's probably best to do this on a serger. But anyway, this technique still works really well for creating a lettuce hem. This is the back of the scrap piece, and this is the front. And if you want to, you can also use a small sharp pair of scissors and cut this extra bit of fabric off the wrong side of the hem. This is not totally necessary, but the lettuce hem tends to bow outwards in places while you're wearing it, exposing the insides of the hem. So it'll look a little bit neater if you do cut this extra bit of fabric away. Okay, so now I've done all that practicing, let's apply these skills to the t-shirt itself. But before I put it under any of my machines, first I cut off any part that had double layers of fabric or a hemline. So I cut off the hemming around the armholes and also the binding at the neckline, leaving raw edges of fabric to work with. Now I'm going to use the serger technique and I'm going to do a lettuce hem to the bottom, the armholes and the neckline. So remember, stretch the fabric while sewing to create that lettuce hem. Seriously, I'm going against every technique that I've learned over the last couple of years to keep hemlines of stretchy fabrics flat. So what I'm doing here almost feels like sewing blasphemy. 
When you get to the neckline, it'll ruffle the least around the sides of the neck hole. That's because this technique works best when you're sewing with the stretch of the fabric, not against it. If you have four-way stretch material in your t-shirt, you'll be fine, but keep this in mind when choosing a t-shirt to use. The fabric in my t-shirt is only two-way stretch, but it is very stretchy. If your material is not particularly stretchy, then making a lettuce hem probably won't work. Or you could just choose to do it around the bottom of your top and your armholes, and leave the neckline out. Anyway, I found that the armholes were the most tricky to do using the serger technique. And if I was going to go back in time, I'd probably use the sewing machine just on the armholes instead. Because I ended up with a couple of places where the overlocker missed the fabric entirely and gave me little loops that hung off the edges like this, and even when it did catch onto the fabric, occasionally the loops still hung off the edge a little bit. But if you do end up with this, there is an easy fix. I just pushed the thread loops back down onto the fabric like this, and then I sewed them in place with a zigzag stitch using my sewing machine. I also finished off the serger tails by sewing over them with a zigzag stitch as well, and then cutting those tails off. So that's it. That's how you do a lettuce hem. So how did I go? This t-shirt is slightly different to the original that Natalia suggested to me. The neckline is wider and it's slightly looser fitting and that has to do mostly with the t-shirt that I started with. If you wanted a smaller neckline you could start with a t-shirt that has a tighter fitting neck and if you wanted a more tightly fitting top you could finish it off by turning it inside out and sewing new side seams or start with a tighter fitting top. But I'm really into comfy clothes right now so I wanted to leave my top looser fitting like this plus I actually really like the wider neckline as well. So that's it. Not only is it super easy to do, but I think it also gives you a better understanding of how your serger or your sewing machine works and also how stretchy fabrics work. So in conclusion, this is a definite. Grab yourself either a short or a long sleeve shirt from the thrift store, doesn't matter, and make this for yourself. Particularly if you don't fit into Brandy Melville's one size fits small clothing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did or if you found it helpful and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Hey. Do you like the stickers on my sewing machine? Then you should totally jazz up your own plain, boring, stickerless, punless sewing machine with some sewing pun stickers from my merchandise store. I designed these stickers and all of the funds raised go back into my YouTube channel and to improving my videos. Pick up a pack today from dftba.com. The link is in the description and all the stickers are printed in North America. Another way you can support my channel is by becoming a monthly Patreon supporter. To find out more, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.